<laughs> well, welcome to the podcast. Hi. How I'm are you? I'm you're here. Me too. <laughs> so I know this is like your second podcast you've ever done, but yes. easy peasy. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and we'll kind of get started there. Yes. So I'm Ashanti Ortega. I'm the founder and creator behind MASH Huntsville. I do content creation and social media management. Awesome. So I know that you're basically a Huntsville native. You've yeah. been here your entire <laughs> life. Uh, talk a little bit about growing up here in Huntsville. And did you think you were going to, you know, plant your roots here now mm -hmm. in Huntsville and you would live here now? Or did you always envision you were going to move away, <laughs> live somewhere cooler? Huntsville's not cool enough. <laughs> what was it like for you growing up here? So I've always been a creative person and, you know, it's Rocket City. Yeah. And, um, you know, growing up, I definitely thought I was going to be like an engineer, like a computer engineer, you know. Um, but clearly that did not work out <laughs> and I'm not there, which yes. is OK. But um, <laughs> it's so interesting because I always felt growing up like Huntsville did not have a lot of creative spaces. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like struggled in that aspect. And I definitely saw myself moving to other cities like Nashville or Atlanta because yeah. the creative scene is so big. Mm -hmm. And even Mexico City, Mexico, because I have a lot of family there. And the creative scene is absolutely crazy over wow. there. So I definitely thought of that before. But as I started growing up and kind of like you know, finding my own community and like figuring, figuring out what I really want to do. I saw myself definitely staying in Huntsville for the long term at the moment okay. to build my career. Yeah. But also like my mom is actually or was a content creator. OK. So I've always been exposed to like anything create creative like YouTube. She was a YouTuber. So okay. I, was, I will always help her out with like the sets. I would always take her pictures for her blog and I will help her record the videos and like help her with lights and stuff like that. So I- It's always been a part of like what you were like, it was like a normal thing for you. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I, <laughs> when I was little, I would make my own videos too because I thought like, oh, this is what people do. Like this is normal. Yeah, everyone <laughs> does this. Yes. And I would like literally edit them on my little like little laptop. Okay. Um, but then like I, as I grew up, I was like, wait, no, not everybody does. No this. one, no one else does this. Right, <laughs> and it was so especially interesting. in Huntsville. It, it, it it's, yes. it's, I think, and I, you've probably seen it too over the last few years. Probably since like, I mean, I graduated high school in 2017. Mm -hmm. So I probably since maybe 2019 is mm -hmm. when I started seeing like more and more when I started the podcast. And I don't know if it was yeah. just because like I was looking for it now, mm -hmm. or if it's always been here, I just wasn't aware of it. And I think mm -hmm. it might have been a little bit of both because I think sometimes when you're and you've probably seen it like know from experience too it's like when you're mm -hmm. a hunts when you're a huntsville native and you've been here forever mm -hmm. you just you just think you know huntsville it's like oh yeah. you know you know these places this is where we go mm -hmm. this is where you don't go all the great things <laughs> yeah and you don't, don't really venture out and I, I don't know if these some of these at least i've seen some of these people i had on my podcast years ago like mm -hmm. they've been doing it for a long time here and it's yeah. like i just had no idea yeah no i I for sure, like I was little, so I didn't really know what it was because it was before you could even get monetized on YouTube. That's when my mom started wow. doing it. And before the, even the label YouTuber and content creator was even a thing. Wow. And so I saw that whole process when it was like becoming a thing. Like I helped her with her sponsorships and like helping reply back to emails because wow. she primarily speaks Spanish. So I would help her like translate and stuff. So I learned kind of like the back end of things. And definitely when I started doing this, which I didn't even envision myself doing this at all. Um, I noticed that, like, I was like, is there a content creator, like, community in Huntsville? Does that exist? <laughs> and, like, little by little, I did see, like, a community build, but it's not... It's not anything like major or crazy like LA, no. for example. Yeah, and I, I think what's, what's fun, too, it's like a lot of local creatives here or really almost local Huntsville's too, Huntsville natives too. It's oh, not yeah. like it's people that have not been here for a long time trying mm -hmm. to be creative here in Huntsville. It's like you have people that have been here, seen Huntsville mm -hmm. grow, <laughs> and, that, and then now we're kind of like putting their talents to use and like showcasing it, oh, which yeah. I think is, is, is incredible to see. At the time when you were helping your mom with YouTube, what mm -hmm. sort of content was your mom doing at the time? So she did uh, lifestyle and beauty. Okay. So she would get, she literally got sponsorships from like Milani Cosmetics, wow. uh, Gain, the detergent. Yeah. She did like a little sponsorship with them too. Um, they actually like flew her out to LA because she was working with this network to do like, uh, I guess like a, like a series of videos and they had like multiple uh, creators from that same network like collaborate together. Wow, that's super cool. And they had a whole like and production team. And this is like team. early like 
This is like 2010, 2011. Yeah, 2010s, like wow. around that time. 2016, probably at the latest. Wow. Yeah. And so she was one of the first. Is does she still do YouTube? No, she doesn't do YouTube okay. anymore. Um, but I definitely learned a lot from it. And even like a lot of people don't talk about like the behind the scenes of like content creation, like the amount of effort and the amount of hours and like just all of that. Yeah. Even like for that single post or that single video yes. or that single whatever. It's like yes. it's a sixty second TikTok, but it took <laughs> three days to, 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 to like do. No, literally. And I saw all of that. Yeah. So I saw like how it developed her like in her creative career, but also as a person. And of course, like she ended, she stopped because it's very overwhelming and it's a lot. Yeah. And it's a lot of people. And YouTube's kind of completely changed. At least mm -hmm. I would say content creation as a whole has yeah. really changed over the last few years where long form isn't really what people are looking for. Mm -mm. We're really short forms where it is. But then you still have that like that bridged opportunity where a lot of creatives are still seeing success with YouTube. Yeah. But their clips and all these other things are just driving traffic back to it. Yeah. Because at the time she that was a moment where long term long form content was like the, best. the moment. Yeah, it was like everyone it. <laughs> everyone would like, they were, like and I think that's a, that's a cool thing that like I think we probably have both been able to experience. It's like that like when you when youtube was such a big popular thing for mm -hmm. me growing up like middle school high school kind of thing <laughs> mm -hmm. and you could sit down and watch a 30 minute video and it didn't seem like a big deal oh yeah it was like sure. oh it's, it's it's only 30 minutes yeah now it's like if it's, if it's not a minute <laughs> clip i don't even want to watch it <laughs> no, like literally. i have i have tr like i love the idea like there's youtubers that i love and like there's oh, content yeah. that i love but i still have a sometimes a str i sometimes struggle that initial first five minutes to mm -hmm. get hooked not because it's not great, but because, like, I'm wanting to already scroll to the next thing. Yeah, for sure. Like, I definitely feel like because we have so many social media strategies from different companies and, like, mm. brands, it has definitely affected the way people consume content. Yeah. And also, I feel like with younger generations, like, they know when brands are trying to sell them stuff. Mm. And they definitely do that through social media because that's yeah. a form of marketing. And so... I feel like that's also how it kind of affects people nowadays, like all these ads and then all these like sponsorships, like people don't really know if it's like genuine content yeah. or not. So I feel yeah. like that's another thing too. So, and, and so like you got to see and like work closely with your mom while, while mm -hmm. she was doing this. Did you pursue a background in marketing and business or is this all sort of <laughs> self-taught, you know, from like you graduate high school to like doing this or is like, how did this transition did happen? There? Yeah. Um, no, I never went to college, okay. so that's something. Um, again, I thought I was going to be like a computer, like software development, like engineer yeah. and stuff like that. That's what you do when you're in Huntsville and you're yeah. from Huntsville. And I went to a tech school, like I okay. went to a, uh, like a high school, yeah. tech school. So I was like, oh, this is probably going to be my whole yeah. entire life. But no, um, but like, I guess it just feels very natural. Like it just felt right. And it was like happening really easily. Like it was just kind of flowing. Um, my both of my parents, they're like entrepreneurs. My mom, yeah, she was an entrepreneur. My dad does a lot of like corporate work, okay. like business. So I always kind of saw the, the. I guess both both ends of the spectrum. Yes, like you, you saw like what it was like to go to work. You know, mm -hmm. get dressed up, <laughs> get in work clothes, go to work, be oh, there yeah. nine to five, come home at six, mm -hmm. eat dinner, go to bed, do it again. Yeah, and then you saw your mom. It's like it's a little bit more flexible. You get to travel, you get to do yeah, these fun things, you get to create sure. videos, you get to be creative. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's a perspective that most people don't get to see. Yes. Uh, they don't get to see, most people see the nine to five. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just what most people do. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, it's a comfortable spot to be mm -hmm. and it's a very common spot for people to be. And so you're not, you being able to see both sides, you are obviously like, hey, this creative side's a lot more fun. <laughs> like, I don't want to yeah. go to work nine to five. I want to be able to work right. whenever I want to work and I want to be able to do what I want to do. And so you kind of pursued that direction. Yeah. I like my dad has always been like a very like tech person, you know, mm -hmm. like very traditional, like mindset wise. So he was very pushy, honestly, about like being in the tech like industry. And so I don't know, like, I was just like, I had my life so planned out and so in line and I thought like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But then like, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I've always been a creative person since I was very little, like always. And I just could never run away from that. Yeah. And I just saw how like passionate I was about it. And I, I love anything creative. I've done like painting, I've done dancing, I've played the piano, like I've done a lot of different things. Yeah. And 
I just knew like within me, this is something that I'm just, I can't run away from. I have to do it. And, you know, I'm really young. So I thought, might as well just do it now, see what happens. Like well. if it works, it works. And <laughs> if it doesn't, it's okay. Like yeah. as long as I know that I tried and that I'm doing it because I genuinely love it. And so that's like mainly why. Um, but also like, I guess like the marketing business aspect of things. Um, it also just feels so natural because like talking to people, networking with people, understanding community and what they need and like listening and paying attention to the littlest like details and also like, strategies for like social media yeah. i do pay attention to things like that and because i've been so exposed to it yeah. for all my life for sure it just feels natural and yeah. i i feel like i know what people want and what they gravitate towards and i i think you know for doing the work that you do you really just have to do it before you can know if it's like y there's no like hey here's this game plan if you read this <laughs> you'll be the best social media right. social media right. manager you've ever wanted to be mm -hmm. and you'll never have to learn anything again mm -hmm. it's like you really just have to just jump in head first and say like hey i'm going to oh, give yeah. this a try mm -hmm. we're going to do the best i can i'm going to learn along the way i'm going to seek it, seek advice from people and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't but at least i tried yeah. um so when did this so typically when you're like when when you're coming up with a new idea mm -hmm. it's either because one you think you could maybe do it a little differently or mm -hmm. two there was no one doing it yeah when you come mm -hmm. up with mash mm -hmm. first off how did where did the name come out and mm -hmm. how did this name come about and then what was sort of the desire what were you seeing out there already and mm -hmm. did you see that you could maybe do it differently or what was sort of the motivation so uh, first, the name. Where did that come from? So at the time, um, I created this brand with one of my friends, and um, we just mashed our names together. Because okay. her name started with M-A, and then my name is Ashanti, so Ash. Yeah. So we just mashed it together. There you go. Literally mash. Perfect. So it was really simple, and we really liked it because we didn't. We don't know any other brand that has that name, and also like it's so quick and like clicky, and like mm -hmm. it's easy to memorize. And it's like okay, mash. You're like yeah, <laughs> and so the way it started is like really silly because we would just like we had our personal Instagrams. I don't have a personal Instagram anymore, but at the time when I did, um, we would just go to like events, and we would be like really bored because like. There's sometimes not things, not much to do at that time in Huntsville mm -hmm. for like younger demographics. And so we would be like, okay, what's like new, what's opening, what's starting, like what events are out there. And so we would go to those things and then we would just like post about it. And like, we would get so much like engagement and so many questions from people. Um, they would ask us like, oh, where did you find out about this like new restaurant and stuff like that? Like younger demographic, yeah. like Gen Z. Um, and we were like, huh we're getting so much like interaction engagement people love us as a combo like a duo why don't we just have a separate account for all of this okay and so we just did it it was all just for fun and then like it actually became a lot serious now than we thought it would yeah um and like that's really how it started so and, uh so. around what year did you end up starting mash uh 2022 2022 so i guess I know we were talking about it off air, but I think the first event mm -hmm. that I actually like met you at or mm -hmm. like you were at and I was at was the opening of the curry. Yes. Which was probably, <laughs> was that around right, like shortly after you started MASH? Yes. Literally, okay. it was so crazy. And I just felt in my heart like this was meant to be like I'm supposed to do this because it was so easy. Like, I don't know. We just got the invitation and it, the way it happened, it was so like. It was like, is this a coincidence? Is this not? I yeah. don't know. It was just like really kind of silly and like crazy. And so we were just like, okay, yeah, let's go. And we got so much attention and like the feedback was so nice, mm. which brings me to another question that you asked me, like, how did I know, like, if I wanted to do this different, did I see something that it was something needed in Huntsville? And I definitely, we both figured that out. Yes, this is absolutely needed in Huntsville. Yeah. And I think the perspective, I mean, like, I think every, those probably since you started, mm -hmm. there's been other, other start. Oh, yeah. But I think the perspective that everyone brings is a little differently. And like, oh, not yeah. everyone's at every event. Mm -hmm. Some people go, go to events that others don't go to. Like, mm -hmm. it's not in their, it's not like what they talk about. It's not what they like showcase. Yeah. And I think for what you showcase, you know, it, it differs from other people too. And I think, yeah. like you said, the perspective, the, the angle of being able to target a, a demographic that's younger, mm -hmm. uh, a demographic that like, you know, we want these people to stay in Huntsville. Like they want to, yeah. like Huntsville's a lot cooler than it once was. <laughs> but like, yeah. if we're not able to highlight it in the way that you do yeah. and 
the audience that you have, like these these high schoolers are going to leave and they're going to go, Hey, right. let's, let, let, let's go to college somewhere fun. Let's yeah. not go to UAH. Let's move away. When I come back, let's do all this rather than be like, Hey, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do here. And it's yeah. changed a lot exactly. since, since I grew, since I was a, a, a teenager or even <laughs> I was a, an, an elementary. So like it's changed so, so much, much. Mm -hmm. and it's such a different place now. Oh yeah, for sure. Like we noticed that cause like this is a very family oriented city, mm. which is perfect. It's good. Yeah. But at the same time, like their kids are going to grow they're going to be young adults and like, they're going to want to do some things that are like more youthful, more vibrant, yeah. you know, not so family oriented. And that's definitely like a market that I realized that hasn't been touched. And I was like, okay, this is definitely something that we don't have in Huntsville. And also like Huntsville is going to have to sell to younger people For very, sure. very soon because yeah. if not already should have been. And, exactly. like, and, I, and I think they're doing a lot of great things now to, mm -hmm. to, to reach those. I mean, areas like mid city and areas like even just what downtown's kind of become. Oh yeah. Like that sure. is, it's targeting those two areas in particular are targeting young professionals mm -hmm. like crazy. And, oh, they, yeah. and they just, I did, have you started going to the uh, Campus 805 after five? I have heard of it. Okay. I have not been able to because of work. Yes. But I do get a lot of feedback from people that do go, which is also like, it's, it like really, really helps to see like what events are working, which ones are not. Yeah. But um, I think I, events like that, like their whole target for that event. And I talked with yeah. uh, Matt Mandrella and mm -hmm. uh, um rob over at dhi yes and they they were like we wanted this event because mm -hmm. it's, it's an area that's it's a cool space like people love campus 805 it's oh, one yeah. of those spots for young professionals it's like this the hub it's the hub of young professionals mm -hmm. but there was really no event there that was targeting them and so being able to do these huge concerts every the i guess it's the third thursday of every month to like october i think mm -hmm. um it's been so like i've been able, only able to go to one i wasn't not able to go to the one in june hopefully going to be able to hit the one in july but it's it's been a cool event it's been interesting to see how they're strategically doing things I that know. are really targeting a young professional because you know there's tons that are here for the summer mm -hmm. for internships and getting them to be like hey Huntsville's cool I want to move back right. I want to stay it, it's it's needed exactly and they have asked me because I I work kind of closely with DHI so yeah. they have asked me like what do you think about campus 805 after five and they've asked me questions like that and then I give them feedback and so far like my demographic really, really likes yeah. it because it's very like chill and they do have vendors that are a little bit more like niche to their, For what sure. they like, like one man's vintage. Yes. Um, and then like the music is very like, um, like local and youthful. Yeah. So yeah, I, I for sure think like that's one thing that Huntsville is very much looking forward to working on at the moment. Yeah. And I, th I think, you know, like stuff like what, what DHI has done with their ambassador program, which I, th I think you're a part of. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was such a cool thing when, when I saw Rob posting that for DHI, I was like, this is one of those things that's really going to give the feedback that we need. Cause it, exactly. it, it's, 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 you know, it's great to get these surveys. It's great to get all this stuff, but mm -hmm. getting these, the, the, the demographic they have with the ambassadors, I think Rocket City Dietitians, one of the ambassadors, yes. I think, uh, Sally, Sally. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Howard is a uh, uh, ham like the food. Uh, <laughs> she is uh, one of the ambassadors too. Uh, shout out to them. But uh, <laughs> they uh, they've uh, they've done a great job with putting people in places that they can give the feedback directly to what's going on. Oh yeah, for sure. And like I'm gonna be really honest. Like I'm the only person that's like in Gen Z in that yeah. group, which is crazy because like it just shows how much of a re representation we're trying to get Huntsville sure. to go towards to. So I was like, oh my goodness, I'm like <laughs> the only young person yes. here, which is scary, but also like we need to start somewhere For sure. if we want to work up to a certain point in our yeah. community. Because I know like downtown Huntsville is trying to make it like a safe space and like, exclu not exclusive, like inclusive to everyone. Yeah. So I definitely noticed that and I was like, oh my goodness, this yeah. is insane <laughs> so obviously since starting mash you've really seen uh, probably over the last maybe would you say the last two years really the growth really kind of take off because i mean yes. you've been doing it for now going on four years five years uh um, it's 2022 you started so two years you've been doing it two yeah. years yeah. so i guess the last year has been pretty crazy yeah kind of and then like i guess as we're halfway through uh 2024 as we're mm -hmm. recording this in in july july 1st actually um I mean, what do you see the rest of 2024 looking like? Is, is there opportunities you're hoping to see? Is there events you're hoping to, what are you excited for? So I actually did my first event, um, was it on the 29th 
of last month, like okay. a couple days ago, actually, probably two days ago. Yeah. And I, I just like, I loved seeing all the young people and like everybody that was creative, like mm. seeing them there. I love that so much. So I see myself doing more events or coordinating more events that are for younger creative people in Huntsville. Um, and also I see myself hopefully being like a full-time social media manager because okay. that's something that I really want to work towards yeah. too. And also being like a full-time content creator. Um, but yeah, I guess just like, those two are my main goals and also like collaborating more with like local brands and like supporting them in any way I can. Yeah. And so, I mean, like if, if, is there a, is, is Instagram your favorite sort of platform for <laughs> content creation? Or if, if you had to, you know, if, if, if there was one platform that you could use, that's the mm -hmm. only platform you could use to continue to grow MASH mm -hmm. now through the end of the year, what platform would you choose is like your core, this is the one that I will choose over any other platform if you had to. Uh, for sure, Instagram and YouTube. Oh, the, the, okay. So is, is, yeah. is full content kind of what you do on YouTube or like what does your YouTube channel look like for MASH? I don't have anything on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> but but is, is, is that sort of a push kind of in 2024 yes. before the end of the year is to get that up and going? For sure. Okay. For sure. Um, yeah, I want to have like a series like in on YouTube um, that showcases and shows people more about Huntsville because we don't have any it's like vlog style kind of thing. Yeah, kind of like vlogs, very like informative, but also kind of like fun and like silly. Okay. Um, but for Instagram, I definitely want more like reels and like posts and updates. So I wanna, I wanna have both of them like connected. Okay. Yeah. So like, I know a lot of content creators they do like vlogs on YouTube and then they'll use some like clips, clips and for Instagram or, or YouTube yeah. shorts or TikTok or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess with, with the background too, of like, you know, working with your mom and doing, mm -hmm. doing YouTube, like though it was a few years ago, you kind of have that idea of like, Hey, here's what it looks like to capture a video here's oh, what it looks yeah. like to edit a video. Here's what it looks like to publish. And like, <laughs> you know, in that social media background of like, what's going to be more successful versus what maybe won't be in like thumbnails and everything else that comes oh, along yeah, with sure. making great content. Uh, so if someone's listening, listening or watching this video, where, can they find out more about you, MASH, connect with you, all of that great stuff? So on TikTok and Instagram, mash.hsv. Okay. And then on Facebook, Ashanti Ortega. Okay. Yeah, that's like my actual name. Um, and yeah, that's Perfect. literally everywhere. And on YouTube too, Mash HSV. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll have all the links in the episode notes or in the description. So if you want to, if you want to find out more about Mash. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can definitely visit there, but I appreciate you taking the last little bit talking about kind of your background here in Huntsville, what you see kind of within the, within the young professional scene mm -hmm. and kind of the future for MASH. I'm excited to kind of be a part of it. And if there's anything that I can ever do, I would love to be oh my God, here period. to do it. But yeah, I appreciate <laughs> I, I appreciate you being here. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>